What's up guys, in today's Calendly tutorial you guys are going to learn everything needed to know to successfully create scheduling links using Calendly. Now we are going to go over the general setup and I will then also show you how to customize everything as well as how to actually significantly reduce your no-show rate on meetings. But more on that later on. For now simply just head over to Calendly. Basically as you can see with your Calendly link you are going to get a scheduling link which is then also going to give you guys access to automated workflows and you can then actually also route different kind of forms and you can basically integrate this on almost any tool out there as you can see right here. So to get started, simply just sign up to Calendly, I'm just going to move forward with Google and I'm then simply just going to connect my Google account. Now right inside here we can then actually also select if we do want to actually give Calendly Google Calendar access, which I'm actually going to tick right here. This is actually a great feature, Calendly does automatically integrate onto Google Calendar, Microsoft Calendar and basically all of the other calendars out there. So I'm just going to connect it right here and now we will have to go through some simple questions to basically customize our whole experience. Uh, I would just simply just skip through this. It isn't really that important what we are going to take here either way. And now we are going to be redirected onto the Calendly dashboard. On the top right, we can see our profile where we can see uh, basically our branding, the link, calendar sync, we can see all of the different settings right here. And we can then actually also see the getting started guide, but you don't need this as for today's tutorial. So actually to get started, head over to your profile, click on all settings and right here on the left under calendar sync, you can then add your calendar. In my case, I've already added Google. However, we can then actually also add other calendars like Outlook calendar, Exchange calendar and the iCloud calendar. Additionally, we can set up our branding right here. So we can, for example, add our own custom logo and we can actually also select if you do want to use the Calendly branding. Now, with that being said, Calendly does actually offer a completely free plan. However, in the free plan, you will have to actually leave this as turned on. Otherwise, you will actually have to go for a paid plan. This is going to come down to your own preferences. I think when just starting out, you can just keep the Calendly branding on and therefore you can then simply just use the free plan, which is going to save you some money when beginning. Either way, let me now actually add my logo and we can now actually save the changes for this to show up. Under my link right here, we can then actually also customize our Kennedy link. I'm just going to go with the default and I'm just going to save this right here. Either way, let's now actually opt out of this. By default, uh, Calendly actually already has connected my Google Meet account right here. However, you can also simply add another conferencing tool uh, by simply just connecting that right here. So you are going to have Zoom, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, GoToMeet and WebEx. I would recommend you to actually just go with Google Meet. Um, it is completely free and also the fastest and best option, at least from my experience. Let's now head back to the dashboard and let's now actually get started by clicking on create right here and let's select an event type. Now right here we will then have to select the event type essentially so we either do have one on one this is going to be one host with one invite and then we also do have group collective or a round robin now this is going to come down to your own needs i'm just going to select one on one as this is going to be the most used one however the basic setup is going to be essentially the same we will then have to select who is going to host this in my case i'm just going to select myself however if you have multiple team members inside your calendly account you can then actually select another host and i'm just going to click on next right here now we are going to see a preview basically a mock-up right here on the right and we can then customize everything on the left so in the event name right here i'm just going to name this discovery call and then we can also set the duration by default you are going to have 30 minutes however you can also change this to 15 45 60 or you can actually also put in a custom amount of minutes i'm just going to leave this at 15 minutes. As for the location, we can then select that, okay, should this be Zoom or should this actually be Google Meet? Additionally, we can also say that this should be a phone call or an in-person meeting, or you can actually also ask the invitee and you can also add a custom location. So if you, for example, are a fitness trainer and if you are going to use this for this, obviously we would have to select in-person meeting. But in my case, I'm just going to go with Google Meet as I've already have connected that as I basically 
basically signed up through Google. So let's now actually update this. Now this is going to show up right here. Now this is going to say web conferencing details provided upon confirmation. We can then actually also add the location option right here. I'm not going to do that. Let's actually now hit on continue. And now we will have to actually go ahead and change the overall thing and now we can actually further customize this page. Actually, we can also add a description onto this right here. This could be anything related to the meeting and we can then actually also customize the hosts, uh, hosts and invites and we can actually also uh, customize the scheduling settings. So basically we can say that, okay, the invitees can schedule their link, uh, basically the meeting 60 calendar days in the future. You can actually also say that we do want to have a buffer time. So basically a time before or after the booked Calendly event and um, this would be somewhat useful in some use cases. I'm not going to select that. As for the minimum notice, so basically the minimum amount of time that they will have to book earlier, and um, this is going to be four hours per default. However, you can actually also say that, okay, you can only book between uh, the next day, essentially. So this is going to come down to your own preferences. Once again, I'm going to leave this at one day as I don't want to have any spontaneous meetings. As for the daily limit, we can set that if we do want to and we can then actually also add the time zone display right here so we can basically just say that okay either we can select automatically detect and show the times in the invitees time zone or we can actually also lock the time zones for ourselves now this is only going to be useful when you are for example going to make in-person meetings when you are going to meet up somewhere other than that i would recommend you to just leave this at the first option we can then also select the start time increments and once ready we can save and close this. As for the scheduling settings, right here you can then actually also change the available hours. So you can just select, okay, Monday till Friday from 9 to 17 o'clock. However, you can obviously also customize this and you can also change to observe holidays. You can change date specific hours and a lot more. But I'm not going to get into that right now. Let's now once again opt out of this. Under the booking page options, we can then change the event link. We can change the booking from. So basically we can put in all of the different questions that we want to get. So by default, this would be name and email. However, we can actually also select and basically customize these right here. And we can actually also change the settings right here. So we can select if we do want to allow invitees to add guests or not. And we can actually also add other questions. Basically, we are going to have multiple answer types right here, which also can be useful to basically get the data from someone. As for the collect payment option right here, if you guys do want to, you can simply connect and integrate Stripe or PayPal and you can then easily actually get money for your meetings. You can do this within one click inside Calendly. To do so, just click on integrations right here and you can then once again select either Stripe or PayPal. This is going to come down to your own preferences. So actually, I'm not going to do that right now. Let's go over the other options right here. We can then select the confirmation page. We can basically customize this. We can then actually redirect them to an external site, or we can actually also change the links to the confirmation page right here. We can, for example, add a custom link if you do want to. As for the communications, basically, I would recommend you to go over this. This is super important. Right here, you are going to have the option to basically, first of all, customize the calendar invitation, and you can then actually also enable email and text reminders. I would recommend you to enable this. This is basically going to significantly improve the show rate on your meetings and you won't have to be in the meeting and you won't have to wait for someone to show up when it's already 10 minutes late. So in this case, just click on on right here and you can then actually also edit this. You can say, okay, we can change the reply to address, we can change the subject and we can also change the body. We can as well also change the timing. So we can say this should be 24 hours before an event or we can actually also say that this should be 12 hours before an event, depending on our own preferences. As for the cancellation policy, this is basically only going to be applicable if you are going to charge for your meetings. And so you can also put that in right here. As for the text reminders, this is basically going to be exactly the same. You can just edit this and you can then customize the text message as well as the timing. One thing which I really like about Calendly is that you can actually insert these variables right here to customize these messages. So this is now going to say, for example, okay, the discovery call with 
the name of the uh, invitee essentially is going to be at this time on this date. So this is just great in terms of customization. I'm now just going to opt out of this. We can actually also add an advanced workflow. This is also super useful. So by basically opening that, this up, this is actually going to work similar to kind of automations, which you often have in email marketing and so on. Right here, you are going to have quite a lot of default workflows, which you can actually use. These are going to be just examples templates which you can add within one click so this would be email reminder to host email additional resources textbook and confirmation to host and a lot more however you can also simply just create your own workflow right here we can okay first of all select the trigger so when this happens this is going to be the trigger for this when the event starts then we can actually say okay how long after the event starts immediately when the event starts or 24 hours after it we can select it right here we can then select do this so basically the action for this we can say okay they should send out an email to an invitee send email to host send email to invitee text to invitee text to host essentially we can just customize this to our likings let's now actually wrap up our example discovery call calendar list so let's just click on save and close now we're now actually opening this up in a new tab you can see that this is actually going to work exactly like we've seen beforehand we can now actually see the different kind of available hours and we can then select it and we will then have to put in the name email as well as all of the other stuff right here so I'm quickly going to do that and I'm now just simply going to schedule the event and now this is going to show up on the Calendly dashboard. Let's actually opt out of this. And right here on the meetings, uh, basically on the home board right here, and you can then see the discovery call, which is going to show up. You can view the bookings page and you can then actually also click on this and see basically how this is going to look like. Now, essentially under settings right here, you can then also edit this, edit the permi uh, permissions, and you can actually also add internal notes, which is going to be useful when having multiple people inside your Calendly organization. And now the meeting is going to show up under the meeting tab right here on the left. So this is now going to show up, Krause, we can see all of the details, we can see the email, location, invitee, we can see the meeting host, and we can actually also see and basically add meeting notes if you'd want to. This is super useful if you are for example working with multiple teammates on the same Calendly organization. You can then actually also reschedule as well as cancel this. You can edit the event type, filter by event type, reschedule invitee again and you can actually also see all of the pending and past things right here. Now under context you can then see an overview of all of the people which all in all actually have made a meeting with you in the past and you can then actually also see the workflows which you have available, integrations and you can actually also set up routings which is basically just once again going to be a way of kind of automating the qualification process for your leads. Now that's basically it, thank you for watching, if you found this video helpful make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.